I'm going to tell for you Barney McCabe. And this story comes from the Barrier Islands off the coast of South Carolina. And a storyteller friend of mine, Tommy Scott Young, heard it from a lady in Charleston who grew up on the Barrier Islands. And then he wrote it down and told it a, a good many times. And I loved his telling. And I, I'm going to share it with you right now. So there was a boy named Jack, and he had a sister named Mary, and he had three dogs, and the dogs' names were Barney McCabe, Doodly Doo, and Sue Boy. And his daddy got really, really sick, and his mama said to him and his sister, I want you to go take your sister Jack, and y'all go and fetch the doctor because your daddy is real, real sick. And mine now because it's getting cold and dark and you got to go through the woods don't get lost and hurry as fast as you can because your daddy is real real sick so jack started to go but he turned and he set a glass of buttermilk on the table and he said mama you see that there glass of buttermilk if it turns into blood i want you to turn my dogs loose his mom said okay so they went, and they went by a cornfield, and Jack went to this particular stalk of corn, and he picked off one, two, three magic grains of corn, and he showed them to his sister Mary and said, Mary, do you see these grains here? If we get into trouble, they're going to help us get out. Now Mary, she didn't believe, and she went, hmm. But off they went through the woods and his mother was right it started getting dark and it started get, getting cold and there were wild animals about so off they went and y'all know what happens when you go through the woods especially at night sometimes you will get lost now the boy scouts say you're supposed to stay still until somebody comes and gets you but that's not what they did. Nope. They walked, and as they walked, they noticed they were walking around in circles and just, just as lost as Hogan's goat. And by and by, Jack saw a, a light through the trees, and he said, Look at that, Mary. You reckon that's a slambo light? She said, I don't know. Let's go see. And so they walked toward the light, and it was a little house, and... They knocked on the door, and the door opened, and it was this real old, ugly-looking white woman. Now, she had a long hook nose with a wart on the end. She had a chin that met, almost met her nose in the middle, and long frizzy white hair it looked like she had given herself a tony permanent and it had gone bad you know those but she saw them standing there and she said oh you look like fat juicy looking little children to me come in come in let me fix you something to eat and jack goes uh uh, uh no ma'am no ma'am uh, 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 we got to go and fetch the doctor because our daddy is real real sick no it's cold and it's dark and there are wild animals about. Come in, come in. And so she fixed them some fried chicken and some baked chicken and some chicken pot pie. She fixed them some roast beef and some um, um, fried pork chops and she fixed them some collards and some cornbread. And for dessert, she gave them some pineapple upside down cake, some pineapple right side up cake. And when they got done, she gave them some of those red round atomic hot balls and, you know, the kind that burn up your mouth. And then she said, now go upstairs and go to sleep. And in the morning, you can go and fetch the doctor. No, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. We got, we got to go now. No, no. Well, she led them upstairs anyway. And... On the sides of the stairs, there were watermelons and pumpkins and mushmelons and honeydews. And they just went up the stairs, and there was a great big, soft, fluffy mattress there with blankets and everything. And 
Mary just dove right in, covered herself up, and it wasn't but a minute before she was... But Jack, he was a little bit more cautious than Mary was, and so he crept back downstairs, and he saw the old woman go over to the fireplace and reach up above it, and there was this great long machete hanging up there. She called it Tomahawk. And she reached up, and she ran her finger over the edge of that knife, and ran her finger over the edge of that knife, and ran her finger over the edge of that knife, and it was dull. So she went to the sharpening wheel. And she sat down and she commenced to sharpen that knife. And as she did, she began to sing, Penny, get your knife, Penny, get your knife, chop em, chop em. Penny, get your knife, Penny, get your knife, chop em, chop em. A humpback, a Josie back, a see Aunt Tooney, Mom and your daddy tell me so. See so, I know it's so, Tamaramaran. Well, Jack got all upset and he went and woke his sister up and said, Mary, Mary, that woman is a witch and she wants to cut us up and eat us. Mary went, huh, huh, what? That woman is a witch and she wants to cut us up and eat us. Oh no, said Mary, what shall we do? I know, let's hide under the bed. And they started to hide under the bed and they said, no, that'll be the first place she looks. And then, why don't we hide in the closet here? No, that'd be the second place she looks. And they saw a window, and they went over to the window, and they were pretty high up. And so, y'all remember those three magic grains of corn? Jack reached into his pocket. He took one out. He kissed it. He blew on it. He said the magic words. Sippity sap, sippity see. Sippity sap, sap, sippity see. Blew on it again, dropped it down. There was a puff of smoke, and all of a sudden, a ladder grew up to the second story window. Jack and Mary climbed down, and they started running up hills and down hills, and up hills and down hills. Well, meanwhile, the old witch woman was still Penny, get your knife, Penny, get your knife, chop them, chop them. A hump back a Josie back a see Aunt Tooney, Mama and your daddy tell me so. See so, I know it's so. Tamarama ran. When she got done, she pulled one of those white hairs out of her head and put it on the tomahawk and it went split in two. That means it was really, really, really sharp. And then she crept upstairs, and oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that they had taken those pumpkins and honeydews and mushmelons and put them in the bed and covered them up with the blanket so it looked like there was two little children in there. And she saw it all lumpy and bumpy, and she went, shonk. Shonk, 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 shonk. Well, there was watermelon seeds and pumpkin seeds and honeydew seeds and marshmallow seeds and watermelon juice and pumpkin juice and honeydew juice flying all over that room. Ow! Oh, they tricked me! Now, the first thing she did was look under the bed. No children. She looked in the closet. No children. Wait a minute. That window wasn't open before. And... She went to the window and looked down, and there was a ladder. They tricked me! And she began to climb down, step over step, step over step, step over step. And then she began to run. And she ran, and y'all, her legs were longer than Jack and Mary's, and it wasn't any time at all before she was right behind them. And you know what she had in her hand? Tomahawk. Well, Jack reached into his pocket again, he took out a second grain of magic corn, kissed it, said the magic words, zippity sap, zippity see, zippity sap, sap, zippity see, blew on it, drop it down. There was a puff of smoke, and y'all know that 
a great big oak tree grew up underneath them and carried them way up into the sky. Now, they were safe for the moment, but you know what she had with her and she was going, chop on the old block, chop on the new block, chop on the old block, chop on the new block. A humpback, a Josie back, a see Aunt Toonie, Mama and your daddy tell me so, see so, I know it's so, Tamaramaran. Now, meanwhile, they were getting a little bit nervous, and Jack reached into his la in his pocket, took out that last final piece of corn, blew on it, kissed it, said the magic words, sippity sap, sippity see, sippity sap, sap, sippity see, blew on it again, dropped it down. Y'all remember that glass of buttermilk? It turned into blood. And Jack knew, uh, mom, Jack's mama knew that she needed to turn them dogs loose. And so she went and turned the dogs loose and they went, Master, Master, coming all the time. Master, Master, coming all the time. Well, the old witch is still going, chop on the old block, chop on the new block, chop on the old block, chop on the new block. A humpback, a Josie back, a see and Toonie, mama and your daddy tell me so. See so, I know it's so, Tamaramarand. Well, dogs are getting closer. Master, master, coming all the time. Master, master, coming all the time. Now, she's still going, chop on the old block, chop on the new block, chop on the old block, chop on the new block. A hump back a Josie back a see Aunt Toonie, Mama and your daddy tell me so. See so, I know it's so, Tamaramaran. By now, they were getting pretty hot on the trail. They were going faster and faster, and Jack could hear them, and he started hollering for them. Barney McCabe! doodle dee doo so boy boy they did take off master master coming all the time master master coming all the time she's still going chop on the old block chop on the new block but those dogs got there barney mccabe grabbed her by her right side doodle dee doo grabbed her by her left side and sue boy grabbed her by the um dress tail and they twisted her around and she turned into an old stump. And if somebody hasn't chopped her down for lighter knots, she's still there to this very day. And Jack and Mary climbed down from the tree and went back to their mom and daddy, and their daddy was doing just fine. All right, I'm gonna tell you the story about the smokehouse. And when I was a child, I can picture it in my mind. You would go out the, the back door and over to my right would be um, the lumber and they had it stacked and in some way they crisscrossed it and my sister and I liked to play underneath it, although they told us not to do that, it could fall. And then um, over to the um, left, and back was the uh, chicken house, the chicken coop, and a fence around that. And we would go in and gather the eggs, and then there was a dog pen behind that. And when my daddy didn't have any more hunting dogs, I had a menagerie out there. I had a turtle and, and rabbits and a few things out there. But anyway, closer up on the left was an old smokehouse. Now, it didn't last my entire childhood because they they tore it down. But it had a dirt floor, and I don't remember them ever um, curing any meat in there, but they talked about um, having hog killings long ago. And my granddaddy would designate, okay, today's hog killing day, and he would have his brothers come, and they would help. And um, my mama would be out there, and they would render down the fat. And they, um, my lady, and my my mama had a lady that helped her sometimes in the house, and she would be out there in the with the great big black pot, and they would stir, and they would make lye soap. Anyway, on the hog killing day, um, 
my Uncle Doc, I never saw him hit a lick at a snake, but I'm sure he did. But he was kind of peculiar. He didn't like to get dirty. So I guess, I don't know what he did with his, to make money, but he apparently made some. And my granddaddy was a trickster. And, oh yeah, and my mama always wanted the intestines to make chitlins and to make casings for sausage. And y'all know chitlins are the intestines and you know what runs through the end game of intestines. And the first thing you do is you take them and you sling them and you know what comes out of them and then you wash them and then you wash them some more and then you wash them some more and then you boil them and then you, whatever you do to them and you know sometimes they use them for sausage casings and so my granddaddy was slinging those chitlins and my uncle doc was over and granddaddy kept sidling a little bit closer and a little bit closer to uncle doc and about that time he wrapped them around uncle doc's neck and only thing Uncle Doc could do was stand there and go, eh, eh, until somebody came and unwrapped him. But anyway, that was hog killing day. And it, you can tell this is a lot of work. So you've got sausages stuffed in that, and you've got bacon, and you've got um, all this smoking to make the bacon last throughout the winter. And, and all these things had to go on. So you wanted to protect it. Well, after they'd had hog killing, my granddaddy went out there, or my, my mama went out there and, and thought she was missing something. Granddaddy went out there and checked, and sure enough, they were missing some pieces of meat. So granddaddy said, well, I'll just keep looking out the door, and you know, tonight I'm going to be on the lookout. So he did, and he didn't notice anything going on. But when he went out there the next morning, there was a whole link of sausages that was missing from the rafters. And so he said, well, I'm going I'm to go into the smokehouse tonight, and I'm going to hide, and I'm going to take my gun with me. Well, he did, and about midnight, the door creaked. And this big, huge cat came in, and it sat on its behind haunches, and then it reached up and slapped at another string of sausages and tore them down. And when he, she did that, my granddaddy raised his gun and shot it with birdshot. Now, the way he was standing, the way the cat was, it hit its foot and tore its foot clean off. And the cat ran, and my granddaddy looked and, and got his lantern and looked, and it was not a cat's foot or a paw. It was a woman's foot. Now, something had to be a, a going on here not right. So he went in, and he told my mammy what had happened. He said, there's some, some magic going on here. I got to go tell the high sheriff in Georgetown. And you take this broom and lay it crossways the door and get another one and put it in front of the front door because a witch cannot cross over a, a broom. They will stop and count every, it's just that ADHD, they just can't handle it. They got to count all the straws in that broom. So he locked her inside the house, and he got in his um, whatever Model Ford it was, and he, he headed out. But before he could get to the crossroads, old Mr. Joe come riding his mule. Whoa, Mr. Pete. Whoa, Mr. Pete. My wife is bad off sick. Could you take me into Hemingway to get the doctor to come out and check her, please? She's bad off. So my granddaddy thought, well, damage is done now. I might as well go ahead and, and help this fella get help for his wife. Now, old Joe was, old Mr. Joe was really, really old, and his wife was real pretty and young. Nobody could figure out quite how that happened. But anyway, he, Mr. Joe got in the car with granddaddy, and they went to him and went and picked up the doctor and came back. and. It was one of those um, 
sharecropper houses and and the front room and then there was um, a curtain that divided the um, bedroom and then you had to go out the door and through a little walkway to go to the kitchen because they were always catching on fire and then you didn't have it you know everything burned down but anyway they came in the house and they pull back the sheet and or the curtain and there was Miss Mary laying in the bed and Lord have mercy she was just as white as the sheet and down at the bottom of the bed it was soaked in blood and the doctor snatched the sheet off of her and her foot was missing Lord have mercy, my granddaddy just, he knew, and he just started backing up and backing up, and he got as close to the wall as he could get, and the doctor took the sheet and started stripping it and tying it to um, stop the flow of blood, and Miss Mary was laying in the bed with her eyes closed, and my granddaddy was standing over here, and she cracked her eyes and looked at him, and when she did, she went, Meow! That's the story of the smokehouse.